the Ask Me Anything, along with Bao and Emma and Sean and Tony and whoever else wants to help on the uh, file wave side. But um, for anyone that was at the HEC conference in Indy in November, this will feel like a repeat because it is basically what we did at HEC in, in November. Uh, we're going to show some things that you can do better in the web admin. Um, a lot of folks might spend their days in the native admin, might never look at the web admin, and we just want to give some exposure to some things that, you know, we feel uh, we're getting right in the web admin uh, and just call attention to it. And, you know, with every release, you know, there should be more in the web admin. So maybe more reason to go there. So that's our goal. So uh, I will give it to Emma and uh, Bao to go through that. And then we'll have the break whenever we finish. And then we'll go into the Ask Me Anything. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. Find it. There we go. All right. Can everybody see my screen? Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'm going to talk about um, pretty much like the device functions that we have here in the web admin and what um, what's different from the web admin and the native admin. Um, so one of the main things that's nice about the web admin is that it's more convenient than the native one. You can log in from just about anywhere, from just about any, any device. Um, and there are some tasks that can only be done in the web admin as well, which I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, and uh, honestly, just overall, the convenience of everything is a lot nicer. So the first thing I wanted to show you is importing placeholders. So in the web admin, if you log in, and to get to your log web admin, if you've never logged in before, you just browse to your um, server address, log in with your normal credentials, and then you get this screen, which is your device screen. Um, and then over here, we have this little upload button here to import a CSV file. And then we can browse to our CSV file, which I already have one created here. So I just have some um, random devices brought in here. So just like we do in the native admin, everything's normal up to this part. So then we can go to the next. What's cool here is that we can actually like dynamically map all of these, all this information. So in my CSV, I have like the client name, comment, and serial number. Um, but this actually needs a few other things like um, whether or not it's a MAC address or if it's a serial number or um, the device name. So if we open up the, these, we can see the file of device fields. And then the ones with the keys next to them are the um, ones that we have to have. So this one will be our device name. This one already knows that it's the comment. And then here we're going to have our serial or MAC address. Then I can hit next. And then from here, I can also do more actions. So we can't do this in the native admin. So I can also like assign any custom fields from this point. I can move to a group that I want. I can pretty much set it up and put everything in there the way I want to um, from the screen here. So we'll select what we ever, whatever we want to do. We can go to next. It's going to give us our summary. It's going to show us all the devices that we're bringing in. Um, I didn't do any actions just for the sake of time right now. Um, but now you can see everything in there and then we can import them into our file server. All right, and then next thing I wanna show you is the client info. So in the web admin, we have a lot more information about these devices. So I'm just gonna pick a random one here. This is Josh's server that we're working on. Okay, so from this view, <clears throat> sorry. So from this view, we can see all of the installed applications. Um, this is not so new for MDM users, but this is also available for like Windows devices. We can see a list of all the applications installed. Um, we can also see any software updates that are needed for this specific device that we selected here. Um, in device info, we have a lot more information, um, including installed fonts, um, anything else that's here as well. We, we can also see applications from this view too. Sorry, I think I'm moving too fast for my network. Um, and then all the location stuff is here as well. Um, I don't have a device that has lo location enabled in this server. So I just took a screenshot from a previous slide and kind of threw it in here so you guys can see it. But there will be a location tab for any devices that have it enabled. Oops, there we go. That have it enabled. And then you can see this view here. 
it's a lot nicer than what we have in the native admin because from here you can actually open it up in Google Maps and if it's a device that maybe you have to travel to to get you can like, like start your directions there um, and a lot more information like latitude and longitude is available. All right and then um, last thing let me find it here in the devices view is you can actually do a multi wipe so you can in the native admin you could wipe a device one by one just select the device you wanted to and wipe it here in the native admin you can select as many devices as you want and don't worry josh i will not wipe all of your devices and then from here i can wipe them oops there we go and then i can wipe all devices and don't worry you do have um to authenticate the wipe before you it'll actually actually send the wipe out to everybody else so don't worry if you if you accidentally send that why can't i find one that has there we go all right and that is it for me so bow if you want to do you want to share your screen or do you want me just to allow you to control oh i'll share thanks okay All right. Hi, everybody. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the tasks that are a little bit more convenient in the web admin console or just require significantly less steps than uh, you would in the native admin. So uh, as mentioned before, one of the nice things about the web admin is that it, it allowed the file wave devs to basically start over with a clean slate without you know, decades of basically UI baggage where features were just added upon other features. So the, the net benefit of that is that a lot of things are just simply laid out better in a much logical manner in the web admin. And what comes along with that is it's much more intuitive. So it's much easier to pick up. Um, you can just figure things out much more easily a lot of the times. Now, um, one of those things that comes into play that sort of fits in with this is basically figuring out the relationship for an association in the web admin is much, much easier than in the, in the native admin. So, for example, if I go to my native admin here and I pick on this client device, this big server device, I can see that specific apps are assigned uh, to this device or associated with this device, but I don't really know how they got associated. I don't know if they were assigned directly to the device itself or, you know, that that file set was part of a file set group. Um, in addition, I don't know if the file set itself was assigned directly to the device or a file set group that contained that file set was assigned to that device. So it's difficult to sort of figure out those relationships without uh, a lot of detective work. You can figure it out, but it takes a, a decent amount of effort in the native admin. You can see down here, I basically can only tell that, you know, that file set was assigned to that device, but I don't know how it got there. In the web admin console, I can see all that information. So uh, let's go to devices here. I'm gonna pick on this Big Sur, the same exact Big Sur machine, and go to the payloads tab. And so these five file sets are the ones assigned to the device. So it's the exact same five file sets here except that you, you've got this little dot here, this information dot. And this tells me the relationship between uh, the file set and the device, how they got tied to each other essentially. So I'm gonna click on it here. So for Google Chrome, and this tells you where the device is in the, um, the device hierarchy and the client hierarchy. And this tells you uh, where the file set is in the file set hierarchy. So I can tell that this Big Sur device is um, in this particular path in the, the, in the client hierarchy. And this uh, file set here, Google Chrome, is uh, in this uh, particular path in the file set hierarchy. And the items that are highlighted are the ones that um, establish the relationship essentially. So Google Chrome was part of Mac browsers and Mac browsers was assigned to Big Sur via the My District. Uh, client group essentially. And so you can verify that. So let's go to, uh, let's go back to the native admin console to verify that in the associations area. So let's go ahead and we'll look up Google Chrome here. Sorry, let me move my uh, ring central bar there. Okay.
Uh, it's sitting around here somewhere. I wonder if I remove that at some point. Let's pick on another one here that's a little bit easier to see. Let's pick on a uh, sublime text here. There we go. So uh, this shows that sublime text in the name of it, sublime text is assigned to Big Sur, but we see that relationship here, right? Um, directly. So sublime text was assigned directly to Big Sur. Let's take a look at another example. For example, VLC. We'll see how VLC got assigned. So in that case, uh, the multimedia group was assigned to the grade six, or the, the multimedia file set group was assigned to the grade six uh, client group. So let's check on uh, VLC here. It seems like I may have made a uh, change last night and sort of uh, broken that. But um, I probably forgot the update model when I was setting this up last night. But you can see how that actually uh, lays out the relationships there. I'm guessing Zoom. Yeah, there we go. So Zoom here, it shows a relationship uh, of how Zoom got assigned. So Zoom was assigned to all Max, and you can see that relationship right here. Okay. Um, one of the other nice things is that um, OS updates now includes a rollout plan where you can specify um, off hours to deploy so you're not disturbing end users so they, their devices don't get rebooted unexpectedly and things like that. So let's take a look at that so we can see an example of what that actually looks like. So we're gonna go to software updates here and I think I can pick on this one. And if you select a device and you um, decide to deploy to one or more of those devices, you can pick a rollout plan here before you actually uh, decide to deploy to those devices. And the nice thing about this is these hours are set um, uh, essentially daily or weekly. Um, so this gets enforced all the time and it's not just a starting time window or a, a starting time, but it's enforced daily essentially um, the entire week. So that's a little bit more convenient in terms of uh, not bothering your users and having devices uh, reboot at unexpected times. Okay, uh, let's take a look at uh, payloads. And let's see here, we'll pick on, I think Zoom is a nice example here. We'll give it a little bit of time to load here. But with, uh, uh, with this, there is a deployment circle, which gives you a better status of the deployment status and um, basically um, how much of it is complete. So you can see here, it's currently assigned to five devices and it's 40% complete. And these, uh, these links, if there are any numbers here, they are linkable. So you can click on it to find out which devices have actually completed it or are remaining or have actually aired out. So let's go pick on this one. And you can see here some of the devices. That actually uh, include that particular status. Uh, let's go talk a little bit about deployments. So with deployments, it's a lot more flexible um, than associations. With associations, they're sort of rigid. You can't really specify any information here about them really. It's basically a file set is assigned to a client device and that's all the information that you know. So targeting is a lot harder there in that case. Let's, uh, let's sort of add a sample deployment here. So you can see there's, the workflow is noted at the top here. So it's very straightforward and it lets you know what's gonna happen in advance. And so you're gonna specify targets, then you're gonna add payloads, which are essentially file sets. And then it's, you, you can set those, uh, options, they would be equivalent to file set options. And then you're gonna get a summary of how many devices are targeted and uh, which ones are excluded. And of course, uh, what items are assigned and the timing options. So let's go ahead and pick, I'm gonna pick something that goes to my district, for example. So I'm gonna target the entire district, but I also have the option to exclude um, a child group, for example. Maybe there's a particular school that I wanna exclude that is uh, 
different than the rest of my schools. So I can go down there and actually exclude a specific child group. So let's say I want to exclude Washington High, for example. So now when I assign any other file sets, it will go out to my entire school district except for uh, all the devices at Washington High. And of course, I can add sort of one-offs here, one-off devices. So maybe there's a device that for whatever reason is not in the school district, I can just add it explicitly also. And the same goes for exclusions. So you can see how this would be much, much more flexible in terms of uh, targeting devices. It's much easier to get to the devices that you want with the minimal amount of effort. Uh, this would require a lot more associations in the native admin console. And let's go to the next step here. And here you would simply pick your payloads from your available list of payloads, pretty straightforward. And then at the end there, you're gonna have some options. Those timing options that I mentioned before, kiosk or you know the starting uh, download and activation times. And then next, you're gonna get that summary I mentioned before. And the nice thing is it tells you how many devices will be affected here and also how much data they're gonna be downloading. So FileWave knows what file sets are assigned. It's gonna count up all the size of the file sets and give, give you a total count here. So think of deployments as sort of a, a, an evolution of associations that are much more flexible in terms of targeting and exclusions. Let me delete this draft here. Uh, one other nice thing also is in the web admin console, there's now a context sensitive script editor. So you can see an example of that. Let me search for here payloads. I think Firefox has an example. There we go. So I think it's this one. Let's go to scripts. Yes. So we'll edit this. And you can see here it's uh, it's highlighted. There's the, the context sensitive highlighting down here. So uh, a lot of times it just makes that easier to edit. All right. And I'm going to hand it back to Josh now for the Q&A session. Hey. Hey. So actually we uh we had to break uh though and and then we would uh pick up at it was supposed to be ten forty five a fifteen minute break and so I guess we would keep it at that to to break uh until the top of the hour so with that i think unless uh unless it's a base or uh or Vasily or anyone else has anything to add before we go to break, uh, we could pause here. And then if we miss discussing something in the chat that somebody raised, we can do it in the Ask Me Anything. There's about an hour there. And you know, if, if you're busy, you can't make it to the Ask Me Anything, you can reach out to us. You know, we, we can chat about any of this stuff at any time. We're happy to get a email or phone call from anybody. Yeah, I think I think that sounds good. So thank you. Thank you very much for showcasing the web admin um, and yeah I would say let's let's catch back up at the top of the hour so everybody can have a quick break uh, for for lunch or you know a late coffee and then we'll see you at the top of the hour or ask me anything